Oh, we're back here on Open. Darren Jaime here with you, and we are bringing you the best that we possibly can during the season of Open, coming to you from a virtual perspective. And, um, and so right now, uh, we've got another special guest coming to us talking about the coronavirus and also dealing with a little bit about the emergency package, talking with Michael Benjamin, who is the associate editorial page editor at the New York Post. And uh, Mike, good to have you. Good to be on, Darren. Doing something normal. That's helpful. Yeah, normal normal is good. First of all, uh, aside from this, talk about how it's affected the Post, actually. Well, most of our, you know, most writers are able to, to work from home and, and telecommute, as can most editors. Um, you know, the, the modern newsroom doesn't necessarily need uh, your presence in, in the newsroom. I've been going because I need a semblance of normalcy. Place is a ghost town. Um, I've been able to get the pages printed off our editorials and have them vetted by the by the editors, and then get them by you know, by seven o'clock over to the uh, to the to, to the printing house so stuff so our editorials get printed. It's nice to be there and have the, the human contact. We're, we're getting our work done. You see the paper putting out lots of stories related to coronavirus, related to how government is responding at the federal, state, and local level. And I think the paper has done a, a very responsible job, both in, on the news side and on our editorials, and keeping New Yorkers informed and cheerleading where appropriate, and criticizing where appropriate as well. Yeah, and I know one thing that you guys are vocal on is the emergency package that has been uh, dealt out. Your thoughts on the emergency package, and how do you think it's going to affect Americans? Well, if it gets done right, the, the first part is, is excellent. It, it's good to provide the Americans who are out of work uh, some level of relief, knowing that the time that those who aren't able to telecommute, that they won't go broke, that they they won't be evicted from their homes, that the Uncle Sam will be providing them with, with some level of, of a payment to help get them through these next rough couple of, of weeks, if not a month or two. That's important to give folks that kind of confidence as we try to stem the tide of this uh, virus as it goes across New York and then across the rest of the United States and, and trying to reduce the number of folks uh, who are infected and those who unfortunately may uh, be victims and, and die. Um, I wish the, um, you know, there was more effort on, on funding going directly to Americans and, and not so much on providing so much uh, corporate welfare for folks who don't need it. I mean, the president wants to give to the cruise industry which is, you know, located basically overseas. I mean, we don't want anybody failing and losing their jobs, but it is, it, they are, according to the president, you know, they aren't part of America first, unless we're looking at maybe some of their employees who, who, who are based here and, and live here. Um, so I think the, the Democrats, you know, we are criticizing them for not uh, moving the package forward, but I think you need a real bipartisan working relationship in order for it to get done and the senate has not had that in its history in, in its most recent history so we're hoping that they'll, they'll be encouraged to do what's right for america and the president will show the leadership to get the right package done so many more americans can can benefit during this time of economic uncertainty and, and, and of course a crisis slow is the word that's being used right now when it talks about the united states response to the pandemic the president of course uh botching by saying that this was really under control, and as we're seeing day by day, uh, that things are continuing to spiral and the numbers are continuing to rise. Your thoughts about how the U.S. has responded to this pandemic the way that it is right now? Unlike the rest of the world, the United States is not a central government. We have 50 states, and when we utilize federalism for the 50 states and the uh, and the territories, um, the 50 state governors can set their own policies. Uh, I will say that the White House was slow in recognizing the uh, how bad how bad the illness was, but they were fast in closing airspace, the borders to Chinese traveling into the United States as a way of trying to uh, slow slow the slow the spread of the uh, of the virus here. But then it broke out in, in Europe, and Italy, and other parts of the world, and they had to eventually come to a, to an agreement to, to close uh, off flights, international flights as well, and to try to recall as many Americans uh, from overseas as as possible. Um, it, it bothers me to see the president always, uh, you know, downplaying the science. Uh, sometimes even contradicting what his own administration members have told the press, and then to see the uh, CDC director having to, you know, contradict the president and correct him. I mean, that shouldn't happen. We should leave the science to the scientists and the optimism that the, the, the president should be a cheerleader, that the economy is going to come back, but he should not be looking to contradict or downplay the uh, severity 
of the projection of the illness. I mean, I'm one of those who don't think it's going to be as bad as they say it is, but I'm not the president. I'm not going to go out and tell people, don't worry. People should practice the proper hygiene and proper social distancing. They should, they should take the illness seriously. And I think the more seriously we take it, the quicker we can overcome it and uh, try to get back to some level of, of normalcy. Yeah, we've heard the word, I well, should not the word, but the timetable actually four months, possibly six months, possibly nine months. This is what came out of New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo's uh, press briefing recently talking about the timetable. Uh, given that, there's also the talk of a possible, you know, a military uh, coming in and helping on this lockdown. Can we see this in the foreseeable future? It depends on how sick people get. I mean, we're seeing the numbers rise, the number of cases rise as people are tested. It's not people who are getting sick, it's people who are getting tested. And then, yes, we do have a rise in the number of cases where people are sick and those who, because of complications and age, um, are fatalities. Um, that's going to happen. But as we can slow it, we'll see, as I say, the flattening of the curve as uh, there are fewer people who get infected and then people who, who then get sick and then people who, who, who may possibly die, that'll begin to flatten out. The military is used because of, of their ability to handle logistics. They can also, as the Army Corps of Engineers can do, is build field hospitals quickly in the event that our city hospitals and state hospitals run out of beds. I mean, that's a real concern if this becomes a real rapid fire pandemic. Um, but for now, it doesn't appear that's the case, but it's always best to prepare for the worst case scenario. And where I differ with our public officials is that they don't tell the public that. They don't say we're doing the worst case scenario, making it appear as though this is what's going to happen next. I think, I think they explain to folks, this is the worst case scenario. We must be prepared for that, but we're hoping for the best. But it's always best to, to, to err on the side of, of caution and, and reassure the public that way. Um, and I think that that's what's been missing both on the federal level and often on the state and lo local level. And we've criticized um, Mayor de Blasio for acting like, like a chicken little and then having to have the governor step in and to uh, better offer, better offer better leadership on the issue. The governor was right in, in, in bringing the National Guard. The uh, president has been helpful in, in, in saying the federal government will fund uh, the use of the National Guard in this emergency. And, and that's what they're for. It's sort of a natural disaster. And, you know, they responded during, uh, you know, Hurricane Sandy. The National Guard responded after 9-11, helping New Yorkers to put our city back together again and, and helping the first responders. These are, are, are important things that are happening. We shouldn't also overlook the sacrifice that first responders, fire, fire police, um, um, public safety folks, uh, health and hospital people, uh, medical professionals are making and trying to help us stem the tide of this illness and to try to return us to some level of normalcy in the next, uh, you know, couple of uh, weeks or months. It depends on uh, how things go. Yeah. And before we uh, get out of here, talk to us a little bit about the Bronx as a borough. Obviously, uh, a lot of people infected and affected. Uh, your thoughts on what you might expect in seeing here in our borough over the course of the uh, next week or so? Well, you know, the Bronx has health health issues. We saw during the Legionnaire's disease outbreak in the South Bronx a couple of years ago, the people who, who con contracted it and then died for people who were the most vulnerable and had compromised immune systems. So I'd imagine there may be a lot of some folks in the Bronx who will succumb to the illness, but then the great majority will overcome it as long as, and it looks like from what I can tell in my travels, that we are abiding by the by the strictures that the, 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 the president and, and the, the governor and the mayor have said. You know, don't go to work if you can, uh, and you're not part of the uh, the health profession that's that's needed or bus and safety people. Um, we're doing it. I mean, I know a lot of people on the on the street, and those who are on the street are, are keeping the, the, their distance. People aren't congregating in bars. The bars are closed. Businesses are cooperating. Uh, people are acting, uh, behaving themselves in in supermarkets and other places where, where they're getting food. Um, you know, it's, it's bothersome that in some places there are some, some shortages of whether it's toilet paper or it's cough medicine in, in some of our pharmacies. But by all, I think that the Bronx is, is responding uh, responsibly. And I think the Bronx's elected officials are doing well in helping to keep people calm and putting information out. I mean, I see emails from Vanessa Gibson, from Senator Alexander uh, Biaggi. Um, our Congress people are sending out regular mail, the emails to people to keep them calm and provide proper information on how to stay safe uh, during this uh, this pandemic. All right. Well, that, we got to leave it there. Uh, Michael Benjamin, 
associate editorial page editor for the New York Post. Thank you so much for being with us and uh, sharing with us. Of course, stay safe. Our best to your family and uh, continue to keep doing the great work. All right. Thank you. Everybody, everyone stay, stay healthy and safe. All right. Michael Benjamin, our guest here. We want you to stay with us. We do have more open. We'll be right back coming up right after this.